Buying ICT hardware can be an expensive business. So today on Resource Review, we're evaluating three pieces of ICT kit for secondary schools to help you get real value for money. They are a projection device to explore planets, a sound control interface that translates movement into music and light, and a multifunction mobile phone. Recommending today's resources is Christian Turton, Deputy Manager for e-learning at Luton Borough Council. On the panel today is Dave Smith, ICT Consultant for the London Borough of Havering, and Ray Barker, Director of the British Educational Suppliers Association. And our roving resource investigator Matthew Tosh is out visiting schools to see how they get on with the ICT hardware. Well, Christian, your first choice of resource for us today is this rather fabulous looking globe, the Magic Planet projection device. Tell us more about it. The Magic Planet is a globe that lets you project images or animations onto it. For instance, here we're looking at the Earth. It connects to a computer and I can add, for instance, satellite images of clouds. So the projection is coming from the inside That's and, right. and what you project is controlled by the teacher over here. That's right, there's a piece of uh, software called Storyteller on my laptop which is letting me choose the images. This is letting me look at hurricanes. I can track weather patterns around the world as the hurricanes progress. And in this animation we can see the progression of the Asian tsunami. Now can you just project the Earth or can you look at other planets? You can look at other planets. For instance, here we can look at Mars. So It's also useful in, for science. And here's a projection of Jupiter. Now what is it about this resource that you like? Um, I think it's the fact that it's a 3D representation. We're very used to looking at images on 2D screens, um, on computer screens and whiteboards or projection units. And this actually encourages students to go and wander around and explore it for themselves. Um, so I think it really brings alive the topics for the students that they're studying. OK, well, let's catch up now with Matthew, who met Head of Geography, Andrew Oreki, from Barnfield South Academy in Luton, who was using the resource at e-learning at Luton. Will he think Magic Planet is out of this world? Magic Planet is controlled by its own computer software and allows you to look at things like plate tectonic simulations, weather systems, all manner of things. Now, as well as looking at the physical and visual aspects of geography, you can also look at human geography and you can use it to promote discussions on our relationship with the planet. So now let's see it in action with Andrew Areiki and his Year 9 class. This projected map on the side shows rivers in China. Andrew, can you tell me how you've been using the Magic Planet today? Um, we used it to actually look at um, flooding in China. Actually, and uh, actually, the kids were able to get information from it to on, you know, answer questions based on the deforestation that's taking place in China. What is it that you really like about this? This gives you a realistic um, projection of the Earth you know, current events can be transposed onto the, uh, the magic planet and it gives you current data, you know, all the time. Ideally, right. each school should have this. one, but shared among the departments. The, the center keeps uh, uh, this one and schools in Luton can actually have access to it. I want you to tell me the source and the mouth of the Yangtze River. The mouth is east. Very good. What is the relief in the source of the Yangtze River? It starts really high and goes down. To the yeah, it starts okay. down to the sea. So you said that it's, it's got a high relief? So what's your overall impression of this? For, for me personally, as a teacher of geography, uh, it will enhance my, my, my teaching a lot. And I believe that what I've just done is probably to scratch the surface. Andrew, thank you very much. And now we'll go from Matthew's world to Hermione's world. Well, Dave, Magic Planet strikes me as a whole new concept in geography. What, what do you make of it as a resource? It's a, a good way of enhancing the teaching and learning of geography and, uh, and other subjects as well. So um, from that perspective, I think it's a, a very interesting and useful resource. But I think I can hear a but in your <laughs> voice. I think the cost is a little uh, prohib prohibitive. Even if you were going to split it between a whole load of different departments in the one school? 
maybe in the secondary school the budget would be okay for that. It may be something that may be invested in between a couple of schools, but I'd be interested to know how many hours of, in the year it would be used for. But if so, and it's a good application, then yeah, why not go ahead with it? I mean, what would you say to that, Christian? You use it, obviously, as, as a centralised resource. That's right. We do have one centralised resource and teachers are able to borrow it, so it goes to different schools. But yeah. would you justify it to schools and say, and say this is a great resource if you've got the money? Absolutely. I think for the engagement that you get from using it and the fact that it can be used across departments, I don't think it's, the cost is prohibitive from, for a school buying it. OK, what do you think, Ray? Well, it has a wow factor and a half, and I think that's what you have to look at, first of all. It is a sensational piece of equipment. But, yeah, I think that cost thing will really get to schools, and you've got to look at exactly how you want your ICT to be embedded across the whole curriculum. OK. Well, time now to move on to Christian's second choice of resource for us today. This is Soundbeam. Now, this is really the resource, isn't it, Absolutely. Christian? Explain it to us. Well, Soundbeam is basically what's, called, what's known as a MIDI control device. Um, so it sends MIDI messages which you can then plug into different pieces of software or pieces of hardware and control sounds with it. It uses ultrasound and simply by moving your hand in the beam um, you can perform. We can extend the beam up to six metres so it could be used with dance or drama as well. How do you think though uh, schools could use this as a resource? Quite often students will see the demands of learning an instrument as a barrier to, to engaging in musical activities. Um, I think this really gives you instant results um, and can lead a student into wanting to learn an instrument. Well, Matthew has visited Lawrence Sheriff School in Rugby to see how Head of Drama James Harris got on with Soundbeam. How we can control the speed of things using Soundbeam. So I want you to use all of those kind of ideas. Yes, yeah, so just pick out some of those phrases. That's a nice rhythm, isn't it? James, tell me how you've been using Soundbeam today. Well, today we've looked at a piece of Shakespeare prose from Henry V. So it's using their interpretive skills to actually turn that into a piece of performance um, or mixed media presentation. Think Agincourt, think just about going into war, you've been wound up by your king. God for Harry, England and St George! When you say Shakespeare to kids, they run a mile. This is actually a very good way of getting them not only to experience the text and start pulling that apart, but actually to test those interpretive skills and the group work skills they're actually a bigger part of the curriculum that come into all subjects. It made them connect with the task a lot more, as well as enjoying themselves. And learning's far easier when they're enjoying themselves. OK, good, well done, guys. Not bad for a first go through, yeah. I think the only thing that puts me off it is actually the, the wealth of wires. Someone said it looked like spaghetti junction back there, and it does a little bit, and that can be a bit daunting. I, I probably would shy away from setting up something like this, really which is why we yeah. have um, we County have Music sort of Service actually coming to set up these things. Um, but once it's up and running, actually the, the operation of it and getting it to do what you want it to do is very, very simple. As long as you've got the technical support there, um, then this resource can be incredibly useful for a great range of subjects. So your overall impression of Soundbeam? I think it's a very good resource. It's, it's another tool to put in your toolbox to actually make learning come to life. I don't see that there's any curriculum boundaries um, in this. It's incredibly versatile. Thank you very much, James. Well, there we have it, a versatile tool. Now let's see what our panel think of it. Back to the studio. Ray, what do you think of Soundbeam? It's fantastic, isn't it, to see ICT used in a purely creative sense. It does throw the whole creativity agenda back on the teacher, which I think is great. Um, but that has its own challenge in the sense that, one, uh, the teacher has to think about how to evolve that ICT within what he or she is doing, whether it be in drama or music or whatever subject. But also, I think the most telling point was the technical setup bit and the fear in that teacher's voice uh, talking about the wires and he couldn't do it without somebody else helping. Him. Christian, what would you say to that? In terms of setting it up, I think that any form of IC, new form of ICT requires some training and some learning, and I think the teachers will probably need to do that. It's probably worth mentioning, because it does MIDI controlling, you can also use it to control multimedia elements, so you can use it to control lighting and also images, video, make it go forwards and backwards according to how you're moving your hand in front of the sound beam. OK, well, Dave, what do you make of that? I, I love this resource. I think it's fantastic. I think it's got lots of application. Really good. 
Um, pick up what Ray's saying about the technical issues here, though, and I think that's important. So whenever this is rolled out, it needs to have good continuing professional development that goes with it. And uh, having been in sensory rooms in special schools as mm. well, I can see many uses for this. As long as it is embedded effectively across departments and, and subjects with block units, cross-curricular aspects there, then you could share the cost across departments and actually it wouldn't cost as much per department. A super bit of kit. I really like it. Well, thank you all very much. Time now to move on to Christian's third choice of resource for us today, and it is the Nokia N95 mobile phone. We've got one down here on the table, but Christian, I believe this is your own choice of mobile phone as well. It is. The phone has high quality video, photography and sound recording, and also has GPS, so you can access the internet also on it. Um, for instance, if a student was out on a field trip, they could take photographs, record video and tag that to GPS. I was in Berlin this weekend and I made a short podcast to show how I might have used it if I was a student on a field trip. Hello, this is Christian Turton reporting for a resource view from Berlin. I created this podcast whilst in Berlin to illustrate some of the ways that I can use my Nokia N95 for mobile e-learning, in this case on a field trip. I think it's a great example of how we can sort of harness technologies that students are using anyway. Obviously in school, teachers need to think carefully about how they're going to incorporate it into the lesson. They can use it anywhere in the school, so you don't have to be sat in an ICT suite to be working, say, on a Word document. You can do that on the phone. Mm -hmm. Are you relying on pupils in the class to have that model or for the school to provide them? No, there are packages where you can get um, data-enabled phones so that it wouldn't have the calling ability on the phone um, for, for schools. So there are packages that allow you to do that, specifically set up for schools. OK, well, let's see what the panel think. Panel, Dave. I think it's got great functionality and I like the way you've used it for podcasting, to be able to work on the go. And as you say, this is the way that we're taking ICT out of the classroom and out of the school and making very good functional use of it. Um, question I would have is, what are the data charges and the, and the cost, the total cost of ownership of it? to a school. I know that there are offers like £1 a day data contracts for the use of mobile phones, so it might be something that you'd want to share between departments. OK. Ray, what do you think? I think the issue is less about the kind of phone or device you're using, but exactly about what kind of mobile technology a school wants to use. I mean, it's very much a growth area at the minute, and particularly with the growth of PDAs in schools. And I think the big issue, obviously, is if you're going to go and purchase these or you're going to take out some, some kind of contract on them, you need to be sure that it's the right device for you. So um, this is not the only kind of device there is to do it. OK, well, thank you all very much. I'm sorry that's all we've got time for today, but to recap, the three resources that we've looked at were Magic Planet Projection Display, supplied by Vivify Limited, the Soundbeam Sound Control Device from Soundbeam Project Limited, and the Nokia N95 mobile phone, available from most mobile phone retailers. For more information about all of the resources we've discussed, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. Very big thank you to our panel, to Christian, to Dave and to Ray. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs>